Sophie. I think I'm here. How are we today? Hope you're well. I'm Libby Dyson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia. And I'm really pleased you can spend some time with me today. So today I'm giving away some bow, little bow paper clips. Now these are a sort of goldy brassy colour. These are a sort of goldy brassy colour. So these are a sort of brassy colour, but they don't have to stay that colour if you want to use them. Just get a pair of tweezers if you've got some and dunk them in Versamark ink. Then dunk them in whatever embossing powder you've got. So we've got black coming back, but there's copper, uh, white. You could even do dazzling diamonds if you wanted to. And heat set it and then I do it two or three times just to make sure that I've got colour all over it and then you can have it almost any colour. I haven't tried doing the um, ink and first mark together to get a colour for your page but so that's my giveaway today. So now if you're a demonstrator and you're watching this and you've seen my colour cards that I've had, I'll just do a reach here, these little colour cards. All right, I found these on the demo site and you go to the colour revamp, scroll all the way down and you'll find these there. And what I've done is I've put them through my printer using Whisper White cardstock which goes through my printer quite easily. I've got an Epson X something or other. Anyway, so put them through on Whisper White and then I've put them back to back, cut them all the same size, put them back to back like that, laminated them, put a hole through the top here after I've laminated it and put it on a ring. Now I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to flip you around again at the end and see how I'd, I'd appreciate your comments to, to see how you think that works, whether you, you like the idea of the two flips or you don't. So please comment at the end. All right, so these are my colour swatches on a ring. So I don't know about you, but I like everything sort of alphabetical, but anyway... I went through and put them in their colour families and then put them back to back, laminated them and just put a hole in the in the top, right hand corner and got them on a ring so I can look up any colour and I haven't yet popped on any blank ones. You can get blank ones that you can work out your own colours on but I haven't done that yet so... All right, just in case you've happened upon me and um, you're not normally here, I'm Libby Dyson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia and I'm really pleased mm. you could join me today. Oh, look, I started to make an impossible card the other day. I am going to finish it. Here's my impossible card. All right, now, all it is, it's one piece of card and it'll fit quite nicely in an envelope and when you stand it up it'll stand up like that and I did do some water colouring on it so with inks and a blender pen and this is watercolour paper so I've still got to decorate the back part of it but it's it's easy as it's one bit of card that you just cut and then it's the way mm. you hold it and fold it so today I've got these giant pegs. Now, Typo used to sell these ones with a magnet on the back. All right, but you can buy these ones in dollar stores. So this is what we're going to look at today. We're going to decorate it because as a timber one, it's not that great, mm. is it? So I'm just going to get some... Share what you love paper. So I think that's the better end. So what we do is turn this over, just get some liquid adhesive 
and you're going to cover all down the sides of your peg. Obviously my liquid glue is not playing nice with friends today, that's better. So when that happens just wiggle it around a bit. You don't want it, you don't want too much glue on this but you do need it right up to the edges. Now I've got another one in Daisy Delight that I did that I'll show you in a minute as another way of decorating it because we're only going to put a ribbon on it today. I want it to be fast. So you butt that up right against the edge of your DSP. And this is great for using up scraps and you don't have to use all the one DSP. You can use a combination of DSPs to make up the final edge. But anyway, so while that's just drying, here's the one I've done before. The one I've, I've done before out of the Daisy Delight. And here's the peg bit. All right. So great way to use up scraps of DSP and make a nice gift as well so don't forget when you're in the dollar stores just have a look for items that would make great mm. projects the big pegs i got at you know hot dollar or the reject shop or somewhere like that rails i've had them for a little while i think hot dollar or dollar king or one of those they're more likely to have them than the reject shop but any of those dollar stores you see, just um, have a look in their art and craft section and you might be lucky enough to find them. I usually, when I do find them, I buy a few. So um, I've got a little stash. There's our peg. And all you do now mm. is come in with your snips and very close to that peg. Now you could use a knife. One of those knives. This hasn't stuck very well. I think the colder weather plays havoc with your 3D projects when you're wanting them to stick quickly. All right, and then I just, I might go all the way across there because we're going to use the other side anyway. All right, so just, I'm just adjusting the paper a bit because it hasn't quite dried. All right, and then just, yeah, you could do, do this with a knife on a rubber mat. Mm. I haven't tried that myself, but you could. All right, so up the side, as straight as you can. I've got a bit of a bulge there, I think. No, that'll do. All right, so I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. And I'll just put this Daisy Delight one there so you can see what we're aiming for. Now, these would be great as, if you do markets or fairs, vendor events, these would be great for those. Package them up in a nice cellophane bag with a bow. Don't forget you can stick little magnets on the back of them. Um, the Typo one, all right, the Typo one's got a magnet embedded in it. But if you put your own magnet on, stick the magnet on first and then put the paper over the magnet, over the whole thing. Or you could put the magnet on last. It's just, it's up to you. All right, I think, yes. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to stick it down. I've already come in and tied a bow in rich razzleberry. Now you could do, this morning I got a new stamp set somewhere in the mail. Here it is. Detailed with love I got. I got I was lucky enough to pick up the punch at on stage, but this detailed with love got so many of my smiles begin with you. That'd be lovely. Stamped out and die cut with one of our layering ovals or a stitched uh, oval. And you could quite easily stick that on the front, I think. Let's have a look. So and I was thinking you could pick up your children's mm. artwork. So I might do that a bit later, but you'll know where that's come from. So you could stick that on the front and it would be great to put all that artwork. I've got a couple of cards that Master mm. Four and a Half has written in 
and um, I want to keep those so I might use one of the pegs for that artwork but that's the in the new catalogue and it's called Detailed with Love was that yeah Detailed with Love so it's got some lovely sentiment sentiments on it too life is sweeter with friends like you you could put that on and punch it out so the ideas are endless all right so we've got that one on and we've got a little sneaky bit left over so all we do is come in and trim that off sorry sometimes i forget i'm videoing and i get it closer so i can see what i'm doing and then realize it's not in the video all right and then i'm just going to stick that back down again because it's lifted all right this bow bow can go on the bottom i think so I'll use some glue dot to attach that and see how we go. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Elizabeth. I really enjoy doing 3D projects. I know there's no actual stamping in it, but we're using lots of Stampin' Up! products. All right, I'm going to put a couple of glue dots on this bow just so that it um, sticks nicely. Yeah, I hope you all had a lovely Mother's Day. Um... I looked like I'd stuck my finger in an electric light socket because we went out and it was very windy, wasn't it? And my curly hair decided, yep, it was going to misbehave. All right, now, if you wanted to keep the ends of your ribbon down, just put a glue dot underneath the top so underneath these bits here sorry i just realized you probably couldn't see again oh look i've got a pearl on my paper piercer all right don't know where that came from so just put a glue dot where you think mm. you want the ends to sort of go and you're just encouraging them to go in one direction and then just come in with your ribbon scissors and netting that up and so there's another gift idea you don't want it to come down too much past the end of the ribbon all right now we have our peg so there's the one i made before with the daisy delight and there's the one with the share what we love all right so we'll give this one a go now so that's those two isn't it funny? Those stripes go that way. Turn it over and the pattern goes in the opposite direction. All right, so in with my glue. And this will show you how you can glue over your magnet mm. and it'll still sort of work. Um, but if you can't embed your magnet, just put your paper on and then put your magnet on later. Right, these ones were from typos so i don't know if they still have them i don't think they do but they're a bit a bit more expensive this over when you're using directional papers just make sure you've got it in going in the right direction and then you saw did you see on my videos last week i did some bulldog clips and some giant paper clips and then used the fine tip glue pen to embellish the or make the flowers that's what we'll do all right i've got some of this here this one so we might just do three flowers do you usually have a piece of dsp that you cut into for if it's floral so you can use the flowers i do all right, so these are the flowers that we're going to look at. So I'll just quickly cut these out. Now, it doesn't matter that this one's not quite all there because I'll show you in a sec what we're going to do. And we're not going to have any leaves on this. So I'll just quickly cut this out and then I'll glue the other side. And while it's drying, I'll cut the other two out. So this is just an idea that suddenly jumped into my head so you're all still with me 
Yeah, there are lots of uses for this idea, Leslie. It's it'd be great. Have them in a craft room to decorate to hang up cards or display cards. So if you're a a, a demo or your your whole cl classes, you could put your cards in these pegs. Mm. You can put your business cards in them. I mean, yes, I just said, Leslie, endless opportunities or endless ways to use the, the peg. All right, so that's one flower done, almost. And you don't have to cut them out exactly. All right, so that's one flower done. I'll just put that to one side for the moment. And then come in with my snips, and I'm just going to... Now, sometimes the pegs are a bit more difficult to snip if they've got these big springs here so that's where a craft knife would come in handy but make sure you do it on a self-healing mat um, otherwise you're going to end up with cuts in your table and I don't want that still with that going that way I'm going to come in and glue the other side of the pen what do I do here's my glue and then we'll cut out those other bits of flowers I'll show you what you can do with the flowers this is just beautiful paper I'm going to go over here this time so pop that on there I'm just going to turn this round so I can see the edge and I'll just move that over to the edge and I'm just doing that because that's the straight edge of the paper all right and while that's drying i'll just come in and quickly cut these flowers and then i'll show you what you can do now mm. when you use your fine tip glue pen like we're going to use it today you need to get yourself just one of these scraps of paper that you've cut off that you can't possibly use like that one that i just snipped off then and you'll put some fine tip glue pen on that so that when you want to know whether the project's dry or not, you touch your bit of paper that you've got, your scrap of paper that you've got rather than your project. Because if you touch a project and it's not dry, you'll have your big paw print in the middle of your project. Ask me how I know. Can I tell you? It was the same when we had crystal effects no something like that anyway and um people would touch their project and you'd say no no that hasn't dried so this one's just going to have a bit of a a different finish so i'm just cutting this third flower and yeah look leslie look how easy this is fussy cutting but it's easy and it you know all to turn your paper rather than your scissors. All right, so that's our three flowers done. Now, still while this is drying, I'm just going to move that out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to get some mini dimensionals because you don't want this um, sticking up too much. And let's see, you're the biggest, so you'll go on the bottom. Um, I'll just put one of these in the middle there feel of it all right and then i'll do this one i think so i'll take that off there sorts of projects you end up with little scraps of all sorts of stuff everywhere all right so i'm going to offset these there and one more for the top flower and put one on there so see how you've got like a 3d effect already and i'm just going to put i say a mini one because the mini ones aren't quite as fat as the regular stamp and dimensionals um so not quite as high I haven't got that height it just means it's it's not as bulky on the project because it's already a bulky project all right i'm just going to cut this out and then we'll go ahead and stick on our flower. And I'll show you what to do with the fine tip glue pen. So I hope you like this project today. And just in case you've only just tuned in, 
I'm Libby Dyson. I'm an independent Stamina Up demonstrator in Australia. And I'm really pleased that you could join us today. So, alright, now, that's pretty good. Alright, so I might stick that there, like that. And then I had a Whisper White Organza ribbon that I was going to stick on there. So I'll use glue dot again. Looks like I'm almost out of glue dots. Alright. So I'm just going to stick that on there like that. With the organza ribbon, you really can't put glue dots underneath because they tend to, the stickiness tends to come through. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. The tails of that are a bit skewy. All right, so then you come in with your fine tip glue pen. And remember I said you need a bit of a scrap. So here's my bit of scrap. And I'm doing that last. Okay, so you just come in with your fine tip glue pen. Colour it in with glue. Colour everything you can see with glue. Now, this does two things. It gives you a nice shiny finish. And it protects the flower from dust and what have you that you might have wherever you have the pegs so if you have it in your craft room you're protecting it from dust I mean you spend a little bit of time fussy cutting it out so you do want it to last if you have it in the kitchen you want to protect it against any of the, the grease and what have you that builds up in kitchens over time you want to keep it nice because you've spent some time on the project now I think that's all coloured in. So just, that's really all you're doing with your fine tip glue pen. I know it says glue, but checking I've got it all. So sometimes the light's not as good. So come back in and sort of move it around a bit so you can see whether you've um, left bits undone. I think that's about it. All right, then I'll put a little piece on here, a little bit of glue on here. And that's the thing I'm going to touch to find out if my project is dry. So put the lid back on your glue pen, guide it with your finger. So this just is mm. glue. You can use it for a covering as well. You can also put um, the dazzling diamonds, sprinkle a bit of dazzling diamonds in it to make it even um, more sort of shiny and what have you so I'm just going to move that a little bit out of the way so there are our pegs for today this one will take a little while to dry but it won't be too long the pegs Julie I found at one of the dollar shops like sometimes the reject shop has them you're more likely to get them at like hot dollar or dollar king or somewhere like that so just check out your cheap shops my husband hates it when we go shopping to a new sort of area because I hang around in all the cheap shops and that's where I pick up my various bits and pieces I know most places have the reject shop but they don't always have them in their craft section but it's still worth checking out um, but I check out all the the different craft shops there are well dollar shops that there are around and I pick up bits and pieces now don't also forget um Kmart often has um bits and pieces or spotlight maybe but you're probably spending a little bit more there but yeah check out the dollar shops um because you know mm. you'll find all sorts of things now don't forget you can watch this again. It's always on my Facebook um, business page. And if you've missed any previous ones that you want to go back in and have a look at, just click on videos. I think it's to the left. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it, Julie. Yeah, I just sort of worry each week as to what I'm going to do that I hope you're going to like it. I'd really like some suggestions, so you can put suggestions on my Facebook business page. Anyway, if you have missed any videos and you would like to go back in and watch them, click on videos to the left, I think, of my business page 
and then you can go through and see them. Last week's unfortunately was three videos because I had so many technical issues last week but this week we seem to have been able to make it through. So thanks so much for popping in today. I really appreciate you spending time with me and I hope you feel that it's time well spent. Don't forget to put some suggestions on my business page because I'd love some, some of your ideas that I could use here. And yeah, I'll see you again mm. next Tuesday. I asked you for comments on whether you liked the idea of me flipping twice. So I see you to start with, or you see me to start with. Then you see the project. And today I've flipped it so you can see me at the end. So I hope you love it. And I hope you'll leave some comments about um, how I've done today's Facebook Live and any comments on some projects or ideas for projects you'd like to see. I'd be happy to see those too. All right, thanks so much for stopping by today and I do appreciate your time. All right, It'll bye for now. Place. See you next time. Try to draw outside.